Good morning and good evening, ladies and gentlemen in the United States and the Republic of Korea. Welcome to this special webinar in the honor of the historic and sad passing of General and Ambassador Peck Sun Yuk on the 10th of July, 2020, at the age of 99. The Korea Defense Veterans Association and our great partner, the Korea US Alliance Foundation, are very honored for this opportunity to say our farewells, pay tributes, and tell stories about the greatest leader and mentor in the Republic of Korea US Alliance. The character, heroism, unmatched contributions of General Peck will be recounted by a very esteemed group of Alliance leaders. Combined, these leaders have over 100 years of experience working in the ROC US Alliance. They span at least five decades of working in Korea on every facet of US and Korean defense, diplomatic, economic, and societal top topics. They, like General Peck, have been, an important, have been important members of the Korean and American US, and the Korean and US alliance. We are doing this webinar so that the stories about the life of General Peck will be available for this and future generations. We hope that people will remember that General Peck Sung Yuk dedicated his life to the Republic of Korea. He so loved Korea that he declared, without my country, I cannot exist. Such dedication, love, and commitment are rarely seen, and we hope you will get a better sense of this man who is so beloved that many of our speakers cleared their calendars to be with us here today. The first of our speakers will be General Jung Sung Jo, the former chairman of the Republic of Korea Joint Chiefs of Staff. I am so thankful for General Jung's leadership, dedication, and friendship. We are brothers and I am very proud that our organizations, KDVA and CUSA, exist solely to support the Alliance and those who have and are serving in Korea. He will then be followed by Ambassador Kathy Stevens, the former U.S. Ambassador to the Republic of Korea. Ambassador, Ambassador Ahn Yo Young, former ROC Ambassador to the United States. Mr. Mark Knapper, the Deputy Assistant Secretary of State. General Scaparotti and Brooks, both former commanders of United Nations Command, Combined Forces Command, and U.S. Forces Korea. General Dave Valcourt, the former commander of 8th Army. General Chunumbum, the former commander of the Republic of Korea Special Warfare Command. General Bernie Champeau, also the former commander of the United States 8th Army Command. General Lee So Young, the former Korean, or Korean defense attache to the United States. And Command Sergeant Major Bob Winston Reed, the former Command Sergeant Major of United Nations Command, Combined Forces Command, and U.S. Forces Korea. General Talele, the former commander of United Nations Command, Combined Forces Command, and U.S. Forces Korea, could not be with us today, but he wanted you to know that when he commanded in Korea from 1996 to 1999, quote, General Peck was the voice he sought and heard when, when he faced challenging situations because he understood both the ROC and the U.S. sides and how we needed to work together. I echo those words because I did the same thing when I commanded. I recall hosting him for the first time at my house in Yongsan. And I was nervous to host such an outstanding figure straight out of history. But he immediately put me at ease and we had a wonderful evening and conversation. As several of our speakers will probably mention, General Peck had an amazing memory. He could talk about a battle in the Korean War as if it happened just a few days ago. I was always in awe of how sharp his mind was, even at his advanced age. But what struck me even more was his love for his country and the ROC US Alliance. Even at his age, he went to work every day in his office in the National War Museum. He was a leader, an influencer, a mentor to many and continued to work every day to strengthen the ROC US Alliance and to support the troops from both the Republic of Korea and the United States. He was a wonderful patriot, teacher, friend to everyone he met. I will miss him, but will always think of him when I think or talk about the ROC US Alliance. 
I won't go further into General Peck's life and contributions because our first speaker, General Jung Sung Jo, will do it far better than I could. So now let me turn it over to General Jung Sung Jo uh, for his tribute. Thank you. Uh, thank you, General Sharp. Uh, good evening and good morning to ambassadors, generals, uh, command sergeant major, and the ladies and gentlemen in this net. Uh, as the uh, representative of co-hosting organization, I thank you very much for joining this tribute webinar for the late hero, General Baek sun uh, My special thank goes to General Sharp and Korea Defense Veterans Association to initiate this uh, meaningful event. Before we begin this session, I would like to uh, uh, take the honor of introducing General uh, Beck's biography. In fact, many of you already know uh, about General Beck's life history. Uh, however, I would like to uh, once again introduce his biography uh, to pay special respect for what, what he had done for the Alliance. Uh, General Beck was born in uh, Gangseok County, approximately uh, 30 kilometers southwest of Pyongyang in North Korea on 23rd November 1920. When he was 26 years old in February 1946, which is approximately six months after the national liberation from the Japanese colonial rule, he graduated uh, from the military language school and was uh, commissioned as the first lieutenant assigned to the National Defense Guard at the time. When Korean War broke out on 25th June 1950, then Colonel Beck led the uh, frontline defense along Gaesong Munsan axis and conducted a delaying warfare as the first infantry division commander. During the defense of Busan perimeter, he shaped the uh, condition for counteroffensive by leading the Dabudong battle to victory and saving the ROC from the uh, extreme crisis. Since General Baek was very familiar with the terrain in and around Pyongyang and Daedong River, uh, his division could become the first to advance into the Pyongyang city uh, during the counteroffensive. He then served as the commander of ROC First Corps, ROC senior representative to the armistice negotiation, task force back commander against North Korean partisan in Mountain Jiri area, and the commander of ROC Second Corps. In July 1952, General Beck led the ROC military as the wartime army chief of staff. When General Beck visited United States at the as the Army Chief of Staff in the midst of ongoing armistice negotiation, he could meet with President Eisenhower with the uh, yeah, advice from Admiral Burke and assistance of General Collins, the U.S. Army Chief of Staff at that time. He tried to uh, persuade the President and asked for the support of the United States to he ensured the security of Iraq. General Peck's effort bore fruit as the Iraq and U.S. signed the Mutual Defense Treaty in 1953, which still serves as the linchpin of today's Iraq and U.S. alliance. On top of making many great achievements during uh, countless battles in Korean War, he achieved uh, so much in terms of enhancing ROC military's combat power even after the uh, signing of the armistice agreement. He served as the first commander of FROCA after its establishment in February 1954 and became the ROC military's first four-star general. He once again served as the 10th uh, ROC Army Chief of Staff on May 1957. He dedicated uh, all of his efforts to uh, enhance ROC Army's combat capability, such as organizing modern tank 
battalions, enhancing artillery forces, and establishing the first combat group. Before finally uh, taking off his military uniform in 1960, he served as the fourth chairman of ROC uh, Joint Chiefs of Staff and contributed to development of ROC and US combined operation capabilities. After retiring from the military, General Beck served as the ROC ambassador to Taiwan, uh, the Republic of China at the time, uh, France, and Canada. He served as the ROC ambassador to a total of 16 different nations, uh, if we include the ambassador's positions in African countries, which he concurrently held due to the physical absence of ROC embassies in those countries. He also served as the Minister of Transportation in the Park jong administration. After, the con after concluding his government services, he even contributed to ROC's industrial development by serving as the Chief Executive Officer for six different companies, including Chungju Fertilizers and Korean Integrated Chemical Incorporation. The ROC government conferred him with two tech order of military merit, which is the highest uh, one, and two Ulji order of military merit, and Chungmu order of mer military merit. He was awarded with Silver Star from US government and received many decorations from foreign nations, including France, Belgium, and Netherlands, etc. cetera. Uh, General Beck married Ms. Noin Suk, who is uh, 95 years old now, and they have two sons, two daughters, and many uh, grandchildren. I personally have very special ties with General Peck because uh, four different positions that I served as a general officer, which are commander of first division, second corps, Proca, and chairman of ROC JCS, completely overlap with General Peck's uh, first steps in the military. I think of this as a great honor. Although we lost the hero, I believe we can succeed his spirit and legacy by strengthening the Iraq and US alliance. In this regard, I'm glad to host this webinar today and would like to once again thank everybody for participating. Thank you very much. Yeah, Jung Sung Jo, thank you very much for that history and the, that tribute. And we'll now pass it over to Ambassador uh, Kathy Stevens. Well, good morning and good evening. And General Sharp, it's good to see you. And General Jung, and I feel so already so moved and honored to uh, see so many uh, friends, old friends here today, and to spend some time with you reflecting on truly a, a remarkable life and, uh, and its meaning. Uh, we've been asked to provide some stories and tributes, and I appreciate General Zhang. I mean, we're talking about 100 years of turbulent history and accomplishment and a life that encompassed all of it. Um, so to start a little personally, I guess, I mean, my memory is of meeting General Peck. Of course, I knew who he was somewhat, I have to say, but meeting him first uh, in 2008, very shortly after I had arrived in, in Korea as the new U.S. ambassador. And uh, although I had lived in Korea in previous periods in my life, um, one of the things I was eager to do as ambassador actually was to visit the new uh, uh, war memorial, the museum that uh, General Char Sharp mentioned, because I had memories and other story of uh, the challenges of, of that being, that land being uh, uh, acquired and that, that memorial built. And so I was really going there to see the museum and, and uh, uh, with my son. And uh, I remember getting there and being told, well, uh, General Peck Sun Hyup, who uh, is the, the chairman, the honorary chairman of the museum, would you know wants to greet you. I said, "Oh, he really doesn't need to do that." It was kind of, and but uh, but of course he did. And uh, I'll always remember arriving at the museum and and just getting into the building as I turned down the hall. Maybe we have a lot of military officers on this, but this was new to me. Here he was, a, a young 88 at that time, standing at the end of the hall, at, erect with a big salute. You know. <laughs> And my walking down that long hill, while he, uh, that long hall, while he held the salute, and what I really expected to be a bit of a courtesy call, like say on, on an elderly gentleman, turned into a long conversation where he signed his book from Pusan to Panmunjom, engaged us in this long conversation that was the beginning for me of uh, in his ninth decade of life, or as a of, a, of an extraordinary uh, relationship with this man uh, over uh, over my three years as ambassador. 
Um, in particular, I recall, and I think uh, General Sharp will as well, we were there in 2010 during many things happened in 2010, but one thing was that it was uh, the uh, 60th anniversary of the Korean War. And uh, of course, uh, General Peck was, was tireless in his, uh, not just his hospitality, but his readiness to engage and share with the many, many veterans, not only from the United States, but everywhere who came back to mark that, that anniversary. But it wasn't only the veterans. Uh, he, uh, one thing I, I did uh, in the 10 years ago, so just, just this time, the summer of, uh, of 2010 was lead a group of uh, Korean university students uh, to do a bicycle ride along the Nakdong perimeter. And as we went along, we actually were reading parts of his book, but it wasn't actually until we got to Weejambu, until we got to where the, da the battle of Dabudong was, was fought. And we actually saw a reenactment that I began to get a sense of, of what that battle was all about. And I'm not a military historian and how important he was in it. So it really gave me a sense of, yeah, something 60 years ago, what a contribution it was and how he continued to find ways to share that, and not in terms of, if I may say to a lot of former military, just telling old war stories as we all do, but really making it relevant to the young people of the day and the challenges. So what do I see as his contributions and legacy? I mean, I, I, General Zhang has summarized so many. I mean, as a civilian, as a diplomat, uh, what I see as a student, I think, of the US-Korea relationship over the years, clearly he was such a key figure in building the army, the extraordinary army and military of the Republic of Korea and building an extraordinary relationship with the US military, with the US Army. And I've served in many countries. It is such an unusual relationship. It's informed so much by the deep personal commitments as well as the kind of professional cooperation. He was central and remained central to that many, many years after he retired. Uh, but he also worked in so many ways to really broaden the alliance with the United States in the ways that I've described, but also in and, and, and the South Korea taking its place in the world at large. I mean, the fact that he was, uh, I didn't realize that it was 16 different ambassadorial positions, but these were did in years when, when South Korea was, was, was battling in some ways for, for diplomatic legitimacy vis-a-vis uh, -vis North Korea and did not have the money and the resources to have, or even sometimes diplomatic ties with all these countries. So this was really frontline diplomatic work that was going on. And, uh, to, and, and what a great representative he was. Um, the other thing I always thought about when I, and I, I still do when I go back to Korea, is uh, the building of uh, Korea's subway in Seoul. Uh, I actually lived in Korea before there was a subway. Uh, it just was being built in the 1970s. And uh, I think this has to go down as part of the legacy as well. So a legacy not only of defending and protecting the, and, and ensuring the survival of the Republic of Korea, but really of combining it with with an understanding of the, the sort of alliances, the sort of relationships, not only with the United States, but with the world, and the sort of economic development that was needed to really strengthen and, and uh, uh, allow the people of Korea to achieve all their potential. So I, I, I think about, uh, we, we, we've lost General Peck. He, he made it through the 70th anniversary of Yu-Gi-Oh! Of, of, of 625. He lived 100 years. I know in Korean age, he was over 100 years old. And I think his hundred years in that century, it, you know, it ca encapsulates what do you think uh, uh, the year he was born and where he was born and, and, and all that happened in the subsequent century, all of the turbulence, the tragedy and the triumph of the Republic of Korea and some of his worst and best times. So it's a life to be remembered. It's a life to be studied. It's a life to be celebrated and learned from. And I really do feel honored to join all of you uh, in doing that today. Thank you, Ambassador Stevens. And uh, we'll now turn it over to Ambassador An Ho Young. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And then good evening and then, and then good morning. Well, Ambassador Stevens, one of the things Ambassador Stevens talked about is uh, the 60th anniversary of the outbreak of the Korean War. Well, well, I'm sorry, somehow I was, I was muting myself. But I was just, just saying, uh, Ambassador Kathy Stevens, one of the things she said was the 60th anniversary of uh, the outbreak of the Korean War in Seoul. And then 2013, General Peck came to visit Washington, DC. 
And then that year, 2013, it was the 60th anniversary of the armistice of the Korean War. And then, of course, it was also the uh, 60th anniversary of the mutual security treaty between Korea and then the United States. And a huge ceremony was held at the Washington Mall. This, this would be something uh, General Sharp, Sharp would, of course, remember. I think uh, General Sharp was the uh, chairman of the organizing committee at the time. And uh, that rally, that ceremony was presided by President Obama himself. And then he came there and then he made a speech and he recognized all the people being or dignitaries being recognized there. And then when he came to the town of uh, General Peck, I still remember it. He introduced General Peck as a legend, living legend. So now we are here. General Peck passed away five days ago. And then, and then we are here to pay tribute to him. I'm just asking myself why all of us agree to calling him as a living legend. I think it was because he was a man of enormous courage. And then uh, General Chong, he just talked about Tabudong, Tabudong battle. And then Ambassador Cathy Stevens also, also talked about the Tabudong battle. And then one of the things I remember from the battle is this, which is, well, if I turn my back to the enemies, shoot me. And I, and I think only a very courageous person could be saying that to his men. I think we also must remember his commitment. General Chang talked about him during his time as Chief of Staff, Army Chief of Staff, had an opportunity to come and visit Washington DC to meet with uh, President Eisenhower. But what I really admire about him is, during the whole period of the Korean War, which was more than 1,100 days, he spent every single day on the battleground maybe except those days he spent in order to make a tri trip to Washington DC. And, and only a man with enormous sense of commitment could be doing that. But at the same time, on, on top of this courage, on top of this commitment, he had this vision. This vision was, well, we live in a very turbulent world and then we are living through a very, very turbulent time. And then it will be only through the alliance between our two countries that we could be defending our freedom, could be promoting peace and prosperity. And that was his, his belief, that was his vision throughout his or, or his life. And I, and I think that vision was true back in 1950. And that vision still holds today. So that, and then for many re reasons, I'm so glad in joining you to pay my, uh, to, to pay my tribute to, to General Peck. Let me briefly come back to that uh, ceremony which was being observed on July 27th, 2013. That was the 60th anniversary of uh, the armistice of the Korean War. After that, uh, after that ceremony, then uh, General Peck wanted to come and visit Arlington National Cemetery. So when it came to this uh, standard issue tombstone of General Walker, he just knelt down and hugged that tombstone with both of his arms, dwelt his face on the, on the tombstone, and then stayed there. And then we moved on and then came to this uh, tombstone of uh, General Ben Fleet. He did the same thing. I was watching him from behind. And I said to myself, well, General Peck, he's paying his last farewell to his comrades in arms. And then as I'm here to pay my own tribute to General Peck, I just want to do the same thing myself. I just want to hold him again in, my, in both of my arms, drill my face up on his shoulder and say this to him, General, thank you so much. Farewell and see you again. Thank you. Thank you, Ambassador On. Uh, and we'll now turn it over to Mark Knapper, Deputy Assistant Secretary of State. Okay, well, thank you. Uh, good morning and good evening. Um, it really is a, a great privilege uh, to have been invited to speak today. Um, thank you so much to uh, the Korea Defense Veterans Association for welcoming me. 
it's, uh, it really is uh, humbling to be in the presence of so many uh, great leaders of, of the U.S.-Korea alliance, uh, stewards of this relationship, and it's especially nice to see um, Ambassador Stevens, uh, Sombenim, and uh, General Brooks, with whom I, I worked nearly two years in Seoul. So again, thank you so much for this. Um, I really do regret, uh, given the circumstances, that uh, I wasn't able to go in person uh, to Seoul to, to join the, the thousands of people uh, who bid farewell to, uh, to General Beck. Um, I had the honor over the course of my career, um, serving three times in Seoul, to have, to have met him on a number of occasions. And um, it was always a really humbling experience uh, to, to meet with him and to be in the presence of someone who had devoted uh, the better part of his, his nearly 100 year life uh, to serving his country um, and to serving uh, the people of the Republic of Korea. Uh, furthermore, his devotion, uh, this devotion of his, not just to his own country, but, but to the United States and to our two countries alliance uh, is really inspiring uh, for someone uh, like myself uh, who's, who serves as a diplomat uh, to see that kind of devotion and that kind of commitment and that kind of love of one's own country, but also of this alliance really, uh, it was inspiring. And so uh, to me, General Beck always welcomed, always, always represented it or felt like uh, he, was the, he, he was the best. I mean, he symbolized the best of, of the Republic of Korea. He symbolized the best of the US ROK Alliance. And so I've always tried to, to and, and I've always endeavored to ensure that my own efforts um, to strengthen our two countries' friendship, our two countries' relationship, uh, you know, would be equally committed and would be equally steadfast to that of, of the devotion of, of General Beck. Um, I think General Beck's service to, to not only the Republic of Korea, uh, but to this alliance really symbolized uh, the fight uh, for our shared values of freedom and democracy. Um, these are values that the United States and the Republic of Korea share today uh, and continue to uphold and continue to work for it, frankly, in, in a region of the world that is increasingly um, under pressure. These values are under, under pressure from, from others in, in the region. And so more than ever, the values that General Beck uh, emblemized and symbolized, symbolized are, are, are just so important. So uh, in his work as, as, as a military man, as a diplomat, as a statesman, uh, General Beck served his country with great distinction and really did help uh, to create the alliance that we enjoy today. So, so my hope, is that General Beck's legacy going forward is going to be that the young people in both the United States and, and the ROK uh, look to, to his example and, and seek to emulate it, uh, look to him as an exemplar of, of service, of devotion to, to country, but also as a commitment uh, to, to this alliance, to this friendship. And for my part going forward, I, I, I hope to, to, to serve uh, and, and see him as an example uh, and continue to work as hard as I can to strengthen and deepen our two countries' friendship and the, in the days and years to come. So thank you again very much for this opportunity. It's, it's an honor to be here. Thank you, Mark. Um, and we'll now pass it over to General Scaparati. Well, good morning and, and good evening. It's a true privilege to be a part of this uh, webinar to honor and remember General Park Sun Yup a true legend, a true hero of his country. You know, uh, many of us here in this webinar that served their senior leaders um, will tell you that their greatest joy and probably some of their best memories of that service were the opportunities that we had to meet with General Puck Sun Yup. That's immediately what I, I think of. He was always available. In fact, I've got a picture here in my home office. I'll just flash it up quickly. You can see General Puck Sun Yup sitting in his chair in his office. And this picture speaks volumes. He's leaning into me, if you could see it. His arms are spread and his hands are reaching out to me. It shows his enthusiasm when he speaks to you, even in his 90s. Uh, the enthusiasm and sincerity uh, that, that he displayed. And uh, it's always a joy uh, to be able to uh, speak with him and gain his advice, as several others have, have noted here. General Puck Sun Yup accomplished so much in his, in his life, and it was always centered on his love for his nation. 
you think about this, in one lifetime, it's been noted he was a soldier, but also the first four-star general of his country and responsible for building this great army that, that they have today. A statesman, but one that served 16 nations, as has been pointed out. Uh, a minister, one who made such a great contribution as the, as the subway system in Korea, and a businessman of, of over six com countries. What you described there is a man that's, that's lived several lifetimes in one. Um, most people would be very pleased to have done any one of those things in a lifetime, and yet he did all of them. And yet for me, what's most remarkable about uh, General Puck's son, Yup, was his humility. Ambassador noticed this too. The first time I went to see him, he came out to greet me. And every time after that, even in his later years, in his late 90s, when he needed some assistance and it was harder to walk, he was always walking down the, the hallway to meet me. He never stayed in his office, and he usually walked me out to the elevator, a sign of great respect for me. And yet this legend did that every time, a, a symbol of how he respected others and always thought of others. They say that the, the measure of a truly great man is his humilities. Well, whenever we were in the presence of General Puck Sun Yup, we knew we were in the presence of a truly great man. God bless him and peace be with his family. Thank you. Thank you, Scott. Um, I will now turn it over to General Vince Brooks. Well, good evening to everyone in Korea and good morning to everyone in America and anyone else who may be watching. Uh, I, I can't describe how great an honor it is to be part of this, so I thank KDVA and KUSEF for making it possible for us to participate in this tribute. And I do hope that it will be viewed and uh, used as a reference for years to come so that people can have a feeling for this incredible human being. I, I certainly uh, ascribe myself to all the things that have been said thus far and those, those things that will be said about, uh, about this amazing man. Uh, I, I could count, I don't know how many words that would describe him accurately. You know, very few people can have so many different descriptors applied uh, to them, but all that you've heard so far and all that you'll continue to hear would tell you about the extraordinary breadth and depth of General Peck Sun Yup, whether it's a patriot, a warrior, a, a leader, a leader by example, courageous, a diplomat, an ambassador, an exemplar, a father, a grandfather, a very proud one indeed, a humble individual, someone who is determined. All these things that have been said, every one of them, accurately describes General Peck Sun Yup. I, I can think of many encounters that I had with him. My earliest ones occurred when I was a Lieutenant Colonel commanding an infantry battalion in Korea uh, back from 1996 to 1998. And I had a few occasions to meet General Peck. And it amazed me when I returned to Korea some years later, it was actually at the change of command ceremony as General Scaparati took over for General Thurman. And General Peck Sun Yup, of course, was there, as he was for every one of us. And he was one of the first sitting in the stands. And I was visiting from US Army Pacific in Hawaii at the time. And I, I'd recognized him, I knew he was there, and I walked over to him before the ceremony began just to uh, pay my respects and say good morning to him. And he said, Ah, oh, Brooks, I remember you. And how it would be that someone so distinguished who had met so many incredible luminaries of history would remember someone like me, it absolutely floored me. And so we've talked about his incredible memory. And indeed, he could recount any battle that he was in any negotiation that occurred uh, as the armistice was being created in such a painful and, and long-term process over those two and a half years. He could tell you who was in a given fighting position at a given point in time. He knew people by their names. 
and even knew each one of us. So we all have firsthand personal experiences with General Peck, every one of them entirely sincere, and that's who he was. He would meet you as you are and meet you as another person, hold you accountable, and not by saying things that would be harsh words of accountability, but rather simply by letting you know how important it was to keep going with the same battle that he'd been fighting for a long time. That was a battle for the Alliance and its value. And so I think each of, each of us, as we remember General Peck on Yup, we also have to remember the obligation that he's passed on to us and the obligation we have to pass on to each succeeding generation. We may not live to be 100 or 101 years old like he did, but for the time that we have, especially the time we have with one another, uh, we have this obligation to carry. So I will always remember General Peck on Yup, his kindness, his thoughtfulness, and his example. And we'll do my best to live up to that, as I know many will. So, Jangwalopke Yushik Peck Sanyab Jangunin. And we will see you again on the other side, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you, Vince. Um, and we'll go next to uh, General Dave Valcourt. Well, good morning and good evening, everyone. And indeed, it's a great honor and privilege to join this esteemed group of Rock US uh, leaders to, uh, to honor General Peck Sanyab. I'd also like to uh, make a special thanks to uh, the KDVA Association, in particular Steve Lee and his team uh, for enabling this webinar tribute. I take a very brief moment also and to thank and recognize General Skip Sharp and General Jones for their personal leadership, energy, and passion to create KDVA and KUSOF and mature it into the great support mechanism of the Alliance that it is today. General Sharp, both Rock and U.S. service members and veterans that have defended Korea appreciate what you have accomplished. And General Brooks, we also thank you for stepping up to assume the KDVA leadership this fall. I first met General Beck Sun Yup when I was an assistant division commander in 2ID back in 2000. And admittedly, this initial contact was at formal U.S. gatherings. And at this point, my appreciation for his greatness was based upon books that I had read of the Korean War and the men, the men who had fought and died in it. But it was when I returned to Korea as the 8th Army Commander in 2006, it was then that I had the opportunity to meet with General Beck more frequently and to actually develop a personal relationship. And I have to say without a doubt, General Beck Sun Yup was the ultimate living expression of our Rock US Alliance, and he epitomized the expression, Kapshi Kapshi Da. Most of us know well that holding hands is a long time, long standing Korean tradition, and it's a manifestation of a shared warm heart and that there exists no daylight between us. When you held hands with General Beck Sun Yup, you were holding hands with history. And I honestly couldn't, could, I always felt and I was in awe knowing that these very hands that I was holding and I shared at that moment had also been shared with the likes of Korean President Sigmund Rhee, US President Eisenhower, Generals MacArthur, Van Fleet, Bradley, Taylor, Ridgeway, Almond, Walker, just to name a few. Perhaps Generals Van Fleet and Rid Ridgeway best captured the essence of General Beck when they wrote, he held steadfast to the basic tenets of the profession of arms, allegiance to country, personal honor, moral courage, abiding concern for subordinates, and the will, the, always the will to win. Without a doubt, my most special memory of General Beck took place shortly after I took command of 8th Army when General Beck conducted a mini staff ride for the 8th Army Command Group and staff to one of the sites that had served as the 8th Army headquarters during the war. And I, and I don't remember exactly its location today, but I do remember that it was located not too far from Nandemun or the South Gate. It was here that General Beck Sun Yat met with then President-elect Eisenhower in December of 1952. Recalling history, Eisenhower had won the November 1952 presidential election over Adlai Stevenson with a campaign platform that included ending the war in Korea. And he promised, if elected, that he would travel to Korea to get eyes on the situation in order to figure out exactly what was going on and what America needed to do to end the war and bring our bo boys back home. When we visited that building and we went up to the second floor room, and we were inside that room, General Beck pointed to the far corner and he said, General Valcourt, it was here in this room I spoke with President-elect Eisenhower and convinced him to support my plan to double the size of the Rock Army. 
General Beck said that he told Ike that three ROC divisions could be maintained and supported for the cost of one U.S. division. You know, at that moment, the ROC Army consisted of only 10 divisions, and by the time the armistice was signed, it was up to 16, and finally, by the end of 1953, the ROC Army had grown to 20 divisions. Incredibly, with General Beck's leadership and ROC and U.S. government support, the ROC Army had doubled in size in just one year. That's incredible. You can only imagine the seemingly impossibility of this task and how long it would take the U.S. today <clears throat> to add just one division to our Army. I will, I will always remember Sunday morning breakfast, whether I was wearing a uniform or back in Korea as a senior mentor. I was always looking at the Dragon Hill Lodge on Sunday morning to see if General Beck and his wife would be coming for brunch because they were frequent, they were frequent uh, travelers to the, the Dragon Hill. And like others had said, he was never, ever too, too busy to drop what he was doing and to speak to U.S. partners. And he made you feel that he was genuinely excited to see you come. We will miss General Beck soldier, statesman, and dear friend, and his love and steadfast dedication to the Rock U.S. Alliance. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. Um, and we'll now turn it over to General Chanobam. Can you hear me? Yes, we got you. I just want to echo the uh, appreciation expressed by many others before me towards the KDVA and the foundation for uh, making this uh, uh, opportunity to pay tribute to General Peck. So the last time I saw General Peck was on 9 February of last year. Um, he had uh, aged quite uh, extensively, but his, his wits were quite acute and uh, we had a nice conversation. And it was heartening to see him in that way and uh, I still remember uh, those moments. Uh, many of you have mentioned how he had an excellent memory of how his ability to uh, relay stories of many decades before, like it was yesterday. So I enjoyed those moments with him as well. Uh, when I took command of the Special Forces, I paid a visit to him, as well as when I became a division commander. Among the many stories, I think two stories for me are appropriate for this, uh, this gathering. The first one was when he became the chief of staff of the army. He said that he was only 30 years old and he was scared. And so one of the things that he did was he went to see uh, Matthew Ridgway and tell him that uh, the Rock Army has made me the, the Rock government has made me the chief of staff. And General Ridgway said, you know, Peck, I know you're doing your best, uh, keep it up. And those words uh, gave him a lot of moral strength to do what was uh, right. And then uh, General Ridgway told him, there will be moments when you have to make decisions and don't put them off. Whether it's the right decision or it's the wrong decision, uh, that, that result will come out later but make a decision, that is important. And I think for me, as I was becoming a division commander and as the SF commander, his, uh, his, his antidote about his uh, inhibitions about becoming a commander, of taking so much uh, responsibility and what General Ridgway told him are those things that I always kept in mind. The second story that I really enjoyed hearing from him was the story about Admiral Ali Burke. So General Beck tells me that he was in Washington, D.C. He was trying to negotiate with the United States. And late at night, after about 9 or 10, uh, his hotel room uh, door is being knocked. He opens the door, and there's Admiral Ali Burke. And the, the Admiral comes in and says, uh, Sonia, tomorrow when you meet with President Eisenhower, Tell them you want a mutual defense treaty. General Beck was surprised and he said, how can I ask the president to, for a mutual defense treaty? And the admiral said, ask him, you know, you never know what will happen. So, you know, uh, 
these two stories tell me the relationship that General Beck had, that the Rock Army had with the United States, and how great American general officers and Americans helped the South Koreans build the army of today. And we should never forget these uh, lessons that he taught us. Finally, I think the greatest legacy that General Beck has given us, even in his, even today as he has passed away, is that he has brought all of us together at this moment. Because of him, uh, there were many instances where we were, we, the Iraq and U.S. Alliance, has been able to come together, uh, talk about things, reminisce about old, you know, old challenges, leading us to answers for future challenges. And ladies and gentlemen, you all know that we have a big challenge right now on the peninsula. Um, many, many uh, uh, facets of challenges. Uh, I think that we need to remember the wisdoms and the c courage of our predecessors, both General Bex and uh, the other gentlemen uh, and ladies who supported us and keep that spirit alive in tribute to General Beck. Thank you. Thank you, General Chenobon. Um And we'll now turn it over to uh, General Bernie Shampo. Uh, thank you, General Sharp. And I'd also like to add my thanks to KD, KDVA, KUSEF, and their sponsors. Um, because of COVID-19, uh, many of us could not travel to Seoul to pay our respects. And so this gives us an opportunity to acknowledge this incredible life. As many have said, um, I was struck by uh, General Peck's example in, of uh, quiet professionalism and humility. And what many of us realize is um, he was always so gracious with his time and his reflections on history. I mean, this is, he lived the history that, that uh, shaped the Rock us Alliance. He attended uh, everything that he was invited to, and I knew him in his 90s. Um, every major exercise, he would come out to the 8th Army uh, uh, Joint Operations uh, Center, which was named after him. There was a vestibule as you went in that uh, was, had his history. And it was a source of pride for all of us, for the Katusa, for the, for the Joint Combined Forces that would come through there, and for those of us in 8th Army. He would do uh, leader uh, development programs, leader professional development programs in the old 8th Army headquarters down in uh, Seoul. My predecessor, J.D. Johnson and others, would ask him to come down and uh, generation after generation of leaders, he would take the time to, uh, to share his insight uh, and his history. Um, 8th Army holiday receptions, as General Valcourt uh, mentioned, you'd see him breakfast in the Dragon Hill of course, you'd see him at Burger King. He loved those Whoppers, and um, but he was always present in that 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 example. I can't remember what I had for dinner last night, but he could remember in exquisite detail, um, and would and would share these lessons of Van Fleet, <clears throat> Walker, Ridgeway, Maxie Taylor. Um, I can't remember if I I would probably shock General Scaparotti and General Brooks that I did something without getting. Uh, permission from my bosses, but Sergeant Major uh, Ray Devins and my chief of staff, uh, Tommy Mize, we decided that it was time to name John Pexton up the honorary uh, commander of 8th Army. And so we, we did that. In fact, I called him the senior commander. And uh, we presented him with a BDU top. I told him he was the only soldier in 8th Army that was authorized to wear the 8th Army combat patch on his, on his uh, right shoulder. On his left shoulder was the Eighth Army patch with the Korean flag, and on his right shoulder was the U.S. flag with the Eighth Army combat patch. And he he wore proudly his uh, silver star. And one of my lasting memories, uh, you know, Scott Parati was gracious enough to include him in our change of command. He was not wheelchair bound at that time, but uh, we recommended that he, because we were going to march in in procession, that he use a wheelchair, which he did. And he sat next to General Scaparotti um, in a place of honor. And we told them, you know, when they play the national anthems, you know, please remain seated. Of course, that was advice wasted. And he struggled to his feet and he stood ramrod straight in that great salute through both national anthems. Um, 
what a memory. And of course, God rest his soul, um, Tom Vanda was there. So um, a great example, a great leader, a great soldier, and a great man. And we're going to miss his daily example. And thank you. Thank you, Bernie. Um, we'll now turn it over to General Lee So Young. Thank you, General Shaw. It is my great honor to join this meaningful event. General Peck was a national hero, great patriot, warrior, diplomat, and statesman. He dedicated himself to defend my country and maintain a strong alliance. In fact, he was the greatest general in the modern history of Korea. I knew his name even when I was a young boy in the countryside, just like everybody knows George Washington, General MacArthur, and General Eisenhower in the United States. General Peck saved our country during the Korean War and modernized Korean military after the Korean War and strengthened Rogue's alliance. He was a strong contributor for building our alliance. As General Jung and other panelists said, he told me that he recommended the establishment of the Rock US Alliance to the President Eisenhower when he visited Washington. President Eisenhower agreed in principle on the treaty. Later, Rock US Alliance Mutual Defense Treaty was signed after President Syngman Rhee's strong push to President Eisenhower. Bottom line is General Park sun was the great contributor for Mutual Defense Treaty, as well as putting continuous efforts for strengthening our alliance. As former CFC commander said, General Park was the great advisor and mentor to the CFC commanders until he passed away. I remember he emphasized Alliance Forever, Alliance Forever several times when four former CFC commanders had an obstacle with him in Yongsan last November. Now I'd like to talk about my story with General Peck. 10 years ago, I translated General Peck's memoir, Without My Country, I Cannot Exist into English, this version. After I was assigned to the defense audition in Washington, DC, I presented that book with his signature to many US generals, admirals, senior government officials, and think tanks experts to better understanding the history of our lives, forged in blood, and enhance our lives. In July of 2013, as Ambassador Ahn said, US Department of Defense prepared for the 60th anniversary for the Armistice and Alliance. I coordinated with the DOD for invitation of General Peck at the ceremony. I still remember President Obama mentioned General Peck with great honor in his speech, referring to him as the legendary General Peck son -yeo. During the ceremony at the Korean War Memorial, General Peck strongly emphasized that freedom is not free. At the time he visited his wartime boss, General Walker and General Van Fleet too at the Arlington National Cemetery and salute his old bosses. It was quite impressive for me. General Beck became honorary commander of the 8th Army in 2013, just as General Shampo said. 8th Army commander presented him field jacket with his name on it. When I got back from Washington to Seoul, after I finished my defense attaché job, General Beck presented the field jacket to me. I said, no, sir. It was given to you by the 8th Army Commander, General Shampo. He said, please keep this jacket. You are my comrade for strengthening our alliance. I said, yes, sir. I still keep it. I think I have a mission from General Peck for our alliance. As a soldier, I send my highest respect and salute to General Peck, who dedicated himself for his country for entire his life. I think he will say two phrases for both Rock and US military leaders in heaven. Those words will be alliance forever and we go together. He will be missed very much. General Peck, sir, rest in peace. Thank you, General Lee. And then finally, we'll turn it over to Command Sergeant Major Bob Winston. 
Good morning and good evening to everybody out there in, uh, on Zoom this morning. First of all, I want to say thank you to KDVA for the opportunity to pay tribute to a truly great man, a humble servant leader, General Peck Sun Yeo. He is a true hero in every sense of the word. This service to his beloved country, the Alliance, and the soldiers who serve both is worthy of this tribute. I'll always remember the look on the faces of the young soldiers and NCOs when he would hand out the award that bears his name, especially the young Katusa soldiers. They would all have this look of awe and the smile on their faces as they took pictures with him were priceless. He never missed one of these ceremonies, even when he was in his 90s. One of my favorite memories is standing with him at many of these ceremonies on the 60th anniversary commemoration and uh, watching the emotion on his face as he recalled the battles that he fought in and, and the desperate fight that they took place in many of those locations. His stamina always amazed me. He would be at every ceremony in almost every social event to show his support. But no matter how busy he was, he always made time for a soldier or a family member to answer their questions or to take a photograph. He was definitely a, a Korean rock star. At every ceremony, there would be a line of folks lined up trying to get pictures with General Peck. My son, an Army veteran, will never forget the time he and my late wife, Donna, visited with him in his office at the National War Museum. Even though he was incredibly busy with, that, with his role in the museum, he took time to talk to and share his memories of the Korean War with my son and Donna. Uh, they, they always talk about that and how much uh, that really impacted him positively. On a personal note, General Peck took special care to take time to mentor me on the history of the Alliance and the significance of our special relationship with the people of Korea. I'm sure he did this for every CSM who arrived in Korea. I could go on for a long time to talk about all that he did for me and every other senior enlisted leader who had the privilege to serve in the UNC, CFC, USFK, and the 8th Army, but there's just not enough time to do so. I want to just, as we were talking today, I, I just remembered my last time meeting with General Peck was at the 75th anniversary of uh, the establishment of the 8th Army there in Camp Humphreys. And even though he was 98, 99 years old at that time, he still had this look of uh, absolute joy of being surrounded by soldiers, leaders of the, of the Alliance. So I would just like to say once again, thanks for the opportunity to pay tribute to this great man, this great leader, this absolutely phenomenal individual and on behalf of all he will never be forgotten thank you sorry about that we are running uh, near the end of our time but i would like to give the opportunity for a minute or so a couple minutes if there's anyone else that's out here that would like to participate in uh, and have a have a short memory of uh, of General Peck Sum Yup. And the way you do that, I'm told, is to raise your hand, and uh, I will unmute you and then um, turn the floor over to you. So, Amy, help me out here. Uh, let me turn it over to uh, Ambassador Tom Hubbard. Tom, thank you for joining us. Um, I think I've turned you on. Ambassador Hubbard, can you hear me? I'm on. I think I'm unmuted now. Is that correct? Yes, we got you, Tom. Go ahead. Okay. Thank you very much, Kip, for including me or inviting me to this webinar uh, to uh, to uh, commemorate a, uh, uh, a man whom I consider to be a, a good friend throughout my time uh, working on, on Korea. Uh, I wanted first to add that uh, among the many honors that uh, General Beck uh, uh, received was the Van Fleet Award uh, given uh, every year by 
the Korea Society for uh, uh, a Korean and usually an American who, who um, uh, contributed uh, greatly to the relationship. Very early in my tenure as chairman of the Korea Society, I, I had the, the great honor of, of, of granting the Van Fleet Award to, to General Peck and to Colin Powell, General Colin Powell, in the same event. It was one of the, uh, the best events that uh, I have attended during my experience with, with Korea and uh, it was a great honor to be part of that. Uh, I first met uh, General Peck in the early 1990s when I was Deputy Assistant Secretary of State holding roughly the same job that uh, Mark Knapper now holds. And uh, General Peck, totally unexpected to me, expectedly to me, arrived in my office uh, during the uh, the uh, the op opening of the uh, of the uh, Korean War Memorial, uh, as part of a uh, a, uh, a group of, of private private sector participants, he wasn't really announced. Uh, when uh, I discovered who he was, I was uh, absolutely awed, and uh, and uh, that stuck with me. Particularly his, as many people have said, his humility and and coming into the State Department, not as head of a group, but as part of a group and, and not really giving very much advance notice. He reminded me of that several times when, when I saw him during my, uh, uh, my time as ambassador and thinking of that meeting with, uh, uh, with General Peck at the time of the uh, opening of the Korean War Memorial just reminds me that he was a, a living symbol of the relationship between our two countries, just as that wonderful memorial as a, as a, a lasting uh, symbol of that important alliance and relationship. We will miss General Peck. Thank you, Ambassador Hubbard. And I think we have time for one more. And um, Dave Maxwell, thanks for joining us. You've worked so hard to continue to help strengthen this alliance. And so thank you for joining us and uh, look forward to your comments. Thank you very much. Uh, it's a great honor to uh, to be able to to honor uh, uh, General Peck. And I'd just like to make one short comment. Uh, in 2006, I was able to escort uh, uh, Robert Kaplan, the noted author, to uh, interview General Peck. And I got to sit in on the, the interview for about three hours. Uh, and uh, General Peck gave, I think, the entire history of the Korean War to Robert Kaplan. But in his uh, article that he wrote about Korea, he quoted General Peck, and I'd just like to, to uh, speak these words uh, for everyone. Robert Kaplan wrote, when we spoke, General Peck insisted that crisis-driven political military decisions here will ultimately determine the balance of power throughout Asia, the most important region for the world's economy. He said, the peninsula is the pivot. And I think those uh, words are uh, as important then in 2006, and they are timeless and important today. And uh, it is sad that we we have to see the passing of General Peck, uh, but uh, I'm glad that we were all able to honor him. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. And ladies and gentlemen, I'm really grateful that you all have been able to share your wonderful and touching stories about General and Ambassador Peck Sun Yuk. To all who joined us today, thank you also for being here to honor and remember General Peck. I also want to mention that Mr. Park Dong Wok General Peck's son-in-law is also with us. Mr. Park, I am sure you can see how much your father-in-law was loved and respected. General Peck Sung Yuk was a true leader, patriot, hero, teacher, and friend. I'm sure we are all praying for him and his family. In order to best honor General Peck, I'm sure his memory will inspire us all to continue to work as hard as we can to strengthen the Rock us Alliance, the strongest alliance in the world. And I'm confident that he is still watching us and guiding us. Again, thanks to all the panelists and those who have joined us. This webinar will soon be posted on the kdva.fed digital library and the KDVA YouTube channel. And we all look forward to seeing you at KDVA's next webinar about the United Nations Command with two former UNC commanders on 27 July uh, at this same time. And again, thank you all for joining us 
and we all continue to work together for the Rock US Alliance. Thank you very much. Thank you.